We are taught from a young age that the map of our solar system is complete. We learn the names of the planets, their order, and their nature. We believe that we have cataloged the major furniture of our home in the galaxy. But there is a growing conviction among the world's leading astronomers that the map is wrong. Somewhere in the deepest, coldest capability of our sun's reach, there is a ghost. For over a century, we have been hunting for a world that refuses to be seen. This isn't a small, icy rock like Pluto. The mathematics suggest we are dealing with a monster, an ice giant estimated to be double the size of Earth, and perhaps 10 times its mass. It is a world of absolute darkness, locked in a massive, highly tilted orbit that takes 15,000 years to complete a single journey around the sun. To put that in perspective, the last time this planet was in this part of the sky, humans had not yet invented agriculture. This is the hunt for Planet Nine. It is the most significant missing piece of our reality. It remains unseen, hidden by extreme distance, and a complete lack of reflectivity Yet its presence is being screamed out by the behavior of the space around it. We are standing on the precipice of rewriting modern astronomy, and the evidence suggests that something massive is lurking just beyond the edge of our vision. To understand why scientists are so confident about a planet they have never seen, you have to look at the history of how we discover worlds. We rarely find them by just pointing a telescope and getting lucky. We find them through gravity. This is a method of deduction that has been proven true before. Go back to the late 1700s. We had just discovered Uranus, the seventh planet, but as astronomers tracked its orbit over decades, they noticed a problem. Uranus was breaking the laws of physics. It would speed up and slow down at unexpected times, appearing to wobble off its predicted path. There were only two possibilities. Either Isaac Newton's laws of gravity were wrong, or there was something else out there. An invisible hand reaching out from the darkness and pulling on Uranus. In 1846, a mathematician named Urbain Le Verrier sat down with pen and paper. He didn't look at the sky, he looked at the math. He calculated exactly where this invisible object should be based on the wobble of Uranus. He sent those coordinates to an observatory in Berlin. They opened the telescope, and there, less than one degree from where Le Verrier predicted, sat the planet Neptune. We found the eighth planet, not with eyes, but with mathematics. And today, history is repeating itself. The exact same gravitational anomalies that led us to Neptune are appearing again, but this time they are happening much, much further out. The evidence for Planet Nine comes from the Kuiper Belt, that vast ring of frozen debris, comets, and dwarf planets beyond the orbit of Neptune. For a long time, we thought the Kuiper Belt was just random noise, billions of icy rocks drifting chaotically. But in the last decade, as we began to map the these distant objects, a pattern emerged that defied coincidence. Researchers at Caltech, specifically Mike Brown and Konstantin Batygin, began analyzing the orbits of the most distant objects we could find, rocks that swing way out into the abyss. If these objects were left to their own devices, their orbits should be scattered randomly, pointing in all different directions, like the bristles of a brush. But that's not what we see. Instead, the most distant objects in our solar system are all clustered together. They swing out in each elongated orbits that point in the exact same direction, and they are tilted at the same angle. Imagine walking into a chaotic, crowded room and seeing six people all spinning in perfect synchronization, independent of the crowd. You would immediately know they are listening to the same music. In our solar system, those objects are dancing to the tune of a massive gravitational conductor. The probability of this clustering happening by random chance is roughly 0.004%. That means there is a 99.6% chance that something is shepherding them. The math indicates a massive perturber, a gravitational heavy hitter that has cleared its zone and forced these icy worlds into line. The simulation fits perfectly if, and only if, you add a ninth massive planet to the model. If the math is right, and there is a super Earth or mini Neptune out there, it begs a difficult question. How did it get there? Standard models of planet formation tell us that you can't build a planet that big, that far out. The solar nebula, the cloud of gas and dust that formed our system, would have been too thin at that distance to clump together into a world of this magnitude. So planet 9 is likely an intruder or an exile.
One leading theory is that Planet Nine is a rogue planet. The galaxy is full of them. Planets that were ripped away from their parent stars and left to drift through the void of interstellar space. It is possible that billions of years ago, one of these wandering orphans drifted too close to our sun and was snagged by our gravity, getting caught in a distant eccentric orbit. However, the more unsettling theory is that Planet Nine is one of our own siblings, a failed core ejected from the inner family. In the violent, chaotic early days of the solar system, Jupiter and Saturn were moving around disrupting the gravity of everything nearby. It is highly probable that our solar system originally had five giant planets, not four. In this scenario, Planet Nine formed closer to the Sun, perhaps alongside Jupiter. But as the gas giants settled into their current positions, this smaller sibling was bullied by Jupiter's immense gravity and slingshotted out into the deep freeze. It wasn't kicked hard enough to leave the system entirely, but it was pushed far enough to become a lonely sentinel guarding the gates of the solar system in perpetual darkness. So we have the math, we have the history, and we have a plausible origin story. Why haven't we taken a picture of it? The problem is the sheer scale of the search. We are looking for an object that is possibly 500 times further from the sun than Earth is. At that distance, the sun is just a slightly bright star. Planet Nine would receive almost no light and reflect even less. It would be tens of thousands of times fainter than Pluto. Scanning for it is like trying to find a single moving piece of coal against a black wall while looking through a straw. Because we haven't found it yet, alternative theories have rushed in to fill the void. Skeptics argue that the clustering in the Kuiper belt is actually just observational bias. They claim we only see objects in those specific orbits because that's where the weather and the telescope alignment allowed us to look. If we looked elsewhere, maybe we'd find objects pointing the other way and the pattern would disappear. Others suggest we need to rewrite the laws of gravity themselves. Themselves, that perhaps at such extreme distances, Newton's and Einstein's laws break down and gravity behaves differently, creating the illusion of a planet. But there is one alternative theory that is far more exotic than a hidden planet. Some physicists have proposed that the object causing these gravitational anomalies isn't a planet at all. It could be a primordial black hole. This wouldn't be a black hole formed from a dying star. This would be a tiny ancient singularity formed in the first seconds of the Big Bang, roughly the size of a grapefruit, but with the mass of 10 Earths. If captured by our solar system, it would exert the exact same gravitational pull as a planet, but it would be utterly invisible, giving off no light, only betraying its presence by the warping of space around it. For years, we have been stuck in this limbo of maybe. We have had the mathematical smoke, but not the fire. That, however, is changing right now. The era of guessing is coming to a close with the activation of the Vera Rubin Observatory. Located in the high deserts of Chile, this is not just another telescope. It is a time machine and a motion detector built on a massive scale. Having begun its full survey operations in 2025, the Vera Rubin Observatory is executing a project called the Legacy Survey of Space and Time. Unlike traditional telescopes that stare at one tiny spot for hours, this machine uses the largest digital camera ever constructed to photograph the entire visible southern sky every few nights. Over the next decade, it will build a high-resolution, time-lapse movie of the universe. It will catalog billions of objects. If Planet Nine is real, it cannot hide from this survey. The observatory will capture the faint, slow movement of the planet shifting against the background stars over time. We are currently analyzing the first batches of this data. If the planet is there, we will spot it. If it's a black hole, we might see the lensing of background starlight around its event horizon. And if we find find nothing, if the survey comes up empty, then we will know that our understanding of gravity or the early solar system needs a complete overhaul. Either way, the mystery that has haunted astronomy for a hundred years is about to be solved. We are the generation that will finally know what lies in the dark. We are tracking the data coming out of the Vera Rubin Observatory closely. If you want to be the first to know when humanity discovers its ninth world, make sure you are subscribed and have notifications turned on. This discovery will change everything and you won't want to miss it. Thanks for watching.